Today we're testing the $700 Ryzen 9 9950X 3D on entry-level motherboards. $99 Gigabyte A620M S2H, $180 Asus B840 Plus Wi-Fi, $170 MSI B840 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi, and $140 Gigabyte B850M DS3H. If you spend all your money on the CPU, at least you can save a buck on the motherboard. <laughs> So here we have the 9950X 3D running on the absolute cheapest AM5 motherboard money can buy, the Gigabyte A620M S2H. The board costs $99, roughly the price of two large pizzas, and what do you get for that? A power design that could generously be described as functional, an I.O. situation that feels like a dare. The VRM setup has five V-Core phases, two iGPU phases, and two mystery phases, which according to my best guess are for DDR5 voltage pump. Yes, your RAM is getting pumped more than you are. MOSFETs are cheap, 69 amps rated, cooling non-existent. Now PCIe is limited to 4.0 speeds because obviously, and you get exactly two USB ports at five gigabits per second speed, which by modern standards is basically a polite way of saying you poor and you should know it. So why this board and not MSI or Asus? Because for under a hundred bucks, this is the cheapest board with bias flash functionality without needing the CPU installed. There's no guarantee an older board has the right microcode to support newer CPU out of the box so bias update is required. Bias updates are a nightmare so good luck. Just look for a GSA 1.2.0.3a patch A. So why the absence of VRM cooling on this motherboard isn't a problem? Well it comes down to A620 chipset spec and Gigabyte's decision to actually follow it. <laughs> See, TDP is locked at 65 watts with peak power tracking limit of 88 watts. Translation, the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D can run, but it can walk. Run a set bench test and you'll see the limitation in action. CPU utilization hovers around 70% and the final score behavior mirrors an 8 core AMD chip. So what if you try to unlock the power? Change VRM power delivery to extreme? Yeah, no. The power limit stays limited. Precision Boost Overdrive, PBO, AMD's automated overclocking tool is not a 620 chipset feature. No VRM cooling is not an issue. There is nothing to cool. The board just refuses to let the CPU hit power levels where overheating could be a concern. Let's see if 180 bucks buys me less trash. Let me introduce you Asus B480 plus Wi-Fi. It's B480 plus then Wi-Fi. It's not like plus Wi-Fi. Compared to A620 board, this one actually has some good stuff. 10 gig USB-C, 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 and two USB 5 gig ports, two additional M.2 slots, one running at PCIe 3.0 speeds of the chipset, bias flash without a CPU, PCIe 4.0 for the GPU. This bad boy goes 480 bucks, which is almost double the cost of our useless board. In exchange, you get a VRM upgrade, eight V-Core phases instead of five an actual VRM heatsink which is great because 9950X 3D is officially supported. Just remember to update your BIOS to version 1006 or later. Power delivery struggles. Their main job is to convert 12 volt power into whatever voltage CPU demands, usually around 1 point something volts, on their heavy 30 minute Cinebench R23 load on the clamps attached to the VRM we saw 61C, which is not terrible, but CPU temps reach 92C within minutes, triggering down clocking, which force us to spend more money on cooling solution. Why? Capitalism. No, it's physics. All the energy your CPU consumes? Yeah, that turns into heat, which needs to be dissipated. Air cooling in this all core heavy workload just isn't enough. But gaming, totally different story. Cyberpunk 2077 only pushed the CPU to 76C, which is fine. The reason? Core parking. Quickly, 3D Vcache is only one of the CCDs out of two. AMD solution, just disable half of the CPU. <laughs> Peak engineering. Time to get wet. So if air cooling doesn't cut it, what happens when you switch to liquid? Enter the Cooling Master 360L AIO. With this, CPU temps during Cinebench run drop to 84C, manageable, but still pushing limits. But here's where things get a little concerning. Even with AIO, the CPU can still hit 92C before AIO 
water pump and fans ramp up in speed. Now here's the part that worries me the most. VRM temperatures, ACES cheaped out. With liquid cooler, there's less airflow over VRM, which means the VRM heatsink needs to do the job. And it kind of did, hitting 72 Cs on the clamp. That's not the scary part. See this value? VDD, CR, VDD, VRM. That's the main power rail for CPU cores and it's reporting 108C, yuck. Now MOSFETs are ready to handle upwards of 125C, but long-term exposure at these temps, not ideal. Plus the spec for this power rail is 8200C under heavy load, which means this board is pushing well beyond what's recommended. So your fancy 9950X3D is stuck with a board that is once in a bench run away from a meltdown. But what about 9800X3D? That VRM sensor only reports 71C during a bench run. So clearly the issue is not the chipset spec, but the VRM design. And here, where Asus cut corners. They charge 180 bucks for this board. They use cheap MOSFETs, 60 amp rated. They added three more phases compared to the $100 board, slap the heatsink, and call it a day. You don't just solve VRM design by just bolting on more metal. That's how you end up with a motherboard begging for a safe ward. Like button, click it. Also, the B840 chipset isn't to blame. It's just a design choice for entry-level motherboards. And if you're spending 180 bucks for this, you might just want to ask yourself, what the f***? Anyway, time to move on to the next board. So MSI promised me greatness, but I'm already Googling the return policy. For $170, the MSI B840 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi looks like a solid budget board. It's got Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, 10 gig USB-C, two M.2 slots, 2.4 gig ethernet, not bad. And it's cheaper than Asus, sounds promising. But then MSI just decided that power limits are a thing now. The problem, explain. Even after updating the BIOS microcode to the most recent, a G -Sir version, the power is limited to 105 watts TDP and 142 watts PPT. That's exactly what 9800X3D is capped at, which is fine unless you were hoping to run 9950X3D. So your 9950X3D is getting choked in a bad way. There's a good way of... Very weird product segmentation approach. Shameless. Asus B840 board we just talked about runs 9950X3D at full power, even though its VRM gets hotter than a Windows laptop left in a backpack. What it's actually good for, if you pairing it with a 9800X3D, you're good. It runs cool and all. 79C on VRM, stable, happy. Finally, something that might not suck. Now we're diving into Gigabyte B850M DS3H. Now let me tell you, the difference in VRM quality here is night and day. The cool new thing? SPS, smart power stage. Gigabyte stepped it up by switching from traditional high side, low side MOSFET setup to the SPS, smart power stage. Made by OnSemi and rated at 80 amps peak power. This is fancy tech where the high side MOSFET, low side MOSFET and the driver circuit all live in one package. Even though SPS is more expensive, they use repeaters, aka doublers, to keep the costs down. The idea is to take one signal and turn it to two phases. Sounds cool, right? Well, no. They are on the limit. In theory, the voltage regulator module's job is simple. Convert that 12 volt energy from power supply to whatever CPU is demanding. And phases are handled by PWM controller. The controller sends the signal to a phase that charges up to the appropriate voltage that gets cut. And more phases mean a cleaner signal. However, to save a buck, Manufacturers use a cheaper controllers with a limited number of lanes that send the signal that gets split in two. In other words, one signal, two phases. Here's what repeaters look like on ACES board. I hope that was educational. So what's the drawback in using repeaters? Number one, high transient response delay. In practice, overclocking will be limited. Number two, VRM temps will be higher. Should you be worried? Not really. AMD would not approve a board that doesn't follow the spec. No matter what, if it works, you should be getting absolute minimum advertised. 9950X3D VRM temps. When I ran Cinebench, that uh, VRM sensor shot up to 97C, and the clamps directly attached to the power stage were hitting 52C. The difference in temps, it's all because of the flip chip design. Thermometer prongs sit on top, but all the cooking is at the bottom. It's still a good idea to check, but really hardware info is your best friend.
get used to it. Just for fun, let's swap to the 9800X3D for a quick look. 38C on clamps and 63C reported. Big difference, huh? 140 bucks well spent. That's a steal, right? For that, you get decent features and I.O. We're talking PCIe 5.0, the holy grail for the latest GPUs and NVMe SSDs, allegedly. Similar to the MSI board USB configuration, 10 gig USB-C, 10 gig USB-A, two 5 gig USB-As, and whatever the f this is, please leave a comment, let me know. What if you need Wi-Fi? Fork out extra 30 bucks and go with the B850 Eagle Wi-Fi 6E for 170 bucks. Here's the real talk. This Gigabyte B850M DS3H is the only entry-level board that can handle this 9950X 3D without setting itself on fire. And it's the cheapest one out of the three. Strange. So here where we stand. Gigabyte A620M S2H. Yeah, not happening. A320 MS2H is a legend. Asus B840 Plus Wi-Fi. It's fine for your 8-core CPU, but 16-core in there is just suddenly you have a VRM space heater. I'm telling you, it's trying to gaslight you into thinking you need to spend more money to be worthy of 16-core chip. Now, MSI B840 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. You want a TDP limit of 140. Five. Now Gigabyte B850 DS3H, this is the one that actually has some potential. Not the best, but solid. And if you need Wi-Fi, get the Eagle version. If you want the real motherboard, just bite the bullet and step up to X870 boards. Think Gigabyte X870 or Solid Wi-Fi 7. 100 bucks more, better I.O., 71 CVRM, no suckage. These boards are meh as hell, no cap Ohio for real for